Alright, we're talking about the importance of lasers today. Before you click off the video thinking it's just about spread and accuracy, there are many things about lasers that people don't seem to talk about. But for now, let's start with point fire spread for our newer players. Everyone says lasers reduce spread when point firing, which is true. But it doesn't just reduce a bit of spread. It's more like you get the same spread as you would aiming down sights. The main reason you would want to aim down sights is so you can zoom in and use more of your mouse pad to micro adjust. At ranges where micro adjusting isn't necessary, say 20 to 25 meters maximum, point firing is the way to go for a wide swing. You don't want to point fire angle holding though. Your FOV goes to your gun when aiming down sight as opposed to your gun going to your FOV, so aiming down sights actually allow you to see more out of the angle. Move speed is the main advantage to point firing during a wide swing. If you don't ADS, you can maintain your full move speed. While Tarkov PMCs don't strafe exceptionally fast, any small advantage is an advantage. Now the obvious and only downside to lasers, your opponents can see it. The easiest way to counter this issue is to just run an IR light, as it's invisible during the day, but every laser will be visible when fighting at night with MVGs. So the best thing you can do is to get used to when to toggle your laser on and off. Similar to pre-painkilling, when you think you're about to fight in a hot zone and you're chatting around stomping, you can toggle your laser on. It doesn't matter if your enemies can see your laser when you're clearly audible. Now inversely, if you're ratting or angle holding while aiming down sight, you can toggle your laser off. Those two things are just a general idea on how to use your laser and flashlight module. There are more nuanced things you can do to gain advantage in a fight. Sometimes I toggle my flashlight on and off when I hold an angle to bait my enemies into thinking I unpeaked, because there's no flashlight shining at their cover. Things like that you have to learn through experience and game sense, it's not something I can teach. I can give you an example but you wouldn't know how to use it or when to use it until you experience it yourself. Just remember the next time you get into an engagement, try to use your brain more. Okay moving on. Now that we've established that having a laser is mandatory, where should we mount it and does it even matter? Yes it does. There's a best possible laser position, especially for Timmy's, but it's mostly preference, let me explain. A lot of Timmy's have it mounted on the left side because it auto mounts to the left. This position is my least favorite, though it does have its upsides. Because your PMC holds his gun on the right side, having a left laser allows you to see whether your IR light is on or off. However, when it comes to tactical advantages, there are none. Because fights are so heavily dependent on right hand peaks, having your laser module on the left can cause clearance issues. Notice how my flashlight doesn't clear the wall so I don't see my target? This doesn't happen with a right side mounted laser. Same thing applies for wide peaks. When swinging an angle, a right mounted laser will clear first, so you can disorient your enemy before they even see your player model. This used to be my preferred light position because when your light is mounted on the right, you can blind fire with your flashlight and bait shots from your opponent. They'll think you're peaked and dump their mag into your fingers. Fucking clown, dude! I got him. Unfortunately, BSG has nerfed blind fire. You can no longer move while blind firing, which doesn't allow micro adjustments that stop you from over peaking when attempting this technique. So my current preferred laser position would be on the bottom if possible. It'll clear corners fine. It's parallel to the barrel, so if your barrel clears, the light will clear. And the laser dot is below the barrel, meaning I'll never shoot too low. When aiming high on their thorax, I might catch them in the head. And at the same time, I'll never place my laser high enough on the head to shoot over them. Which is the opposite of what happens with a top mounted laser. Because it's above the barrel, at close range it might hit stomach trying to aim thorax. Or thorax when trying to aim head, which is lethal but not as quick. It could even be not lethal at all, depending on whether or not your ammo is effective against their armor. But the best possible laser position, especially for Timmy's, is actually having two lasers. One left, one right. We plant our laser combo module on the right for the utmost advantage, and we buy a cheap 5k blue laser for the left. This way we will always know exactly where our bullets will land, between these two lasers. I can't be fucked running the setup, but I have seen it used in raid. 5k rubles isn't a lot, so if you're having troubles point firing, practice with this setup before moving on to the previous ones. Okay on to which laser or flashlight module to buy because there are differences. Let's start by debunking or confirming the myth that flashlight only attachments do not have the accuracy buff. I tested this with a couple different flashlights and here's what I found. Lights that require a ring to attach to your gun do not give the accuracy buff. 
However, flashlight only modules that go directly to your pick rail, no ring mount required, like the WMX or Clash 2U, do give you the bonus. So buy these if you're going flashlight only. For which laser and light combo to choose? Well again, there's a difference. Let me demonstrate. Here's the Baldur Pro, introduced last wipe, and it takes over the X400 as the cheapest light laser combo. Watch what happens when I look down the hall in dorms. It's clear down the hall, right? We see nobody there. But let's see what happens when you use the X400. Flashlight brightness determines how far you can see in dark places. If you're an avid no MVG Nightrunner, definitely take the X400 over a Baldur. Even the most popular Chad laser in the game, the D-Bal, has range issues in the dark. However, despite its range issue, the D-Bal is the only thing you can run if you want the option of having an invisible IR laser during the day while having a flashlight option. Unless you want to run two modules, one IR, one flashlight. You'll have to toggle on your IR and then attach your light at the start of every raid. This also adds on to the cost because you'll be paying for two lasers. Your total will come pretty close to the market price of a D-Bal, so I don't think it's worth it. If you like night raids and want an IR only option, just pick whatever's cheapest on market. Usually the PEC 15. However, if you enjoy night raids and bug amusing, then the 2 IKS is the way to go. They haven't patched it yet and I've made a video and a short about this last wipe. The short is to clarify something in the long video because people are misunderstanding the issue in the comments. Essentially, you have an IR light on your client side. But on their client, it's a flashlight. So when they stare into it with MVGs, they get blinded as if it's a normal flashlight. While I was testing this, every raid increased my god complex. It was such an overwhelming advantage it wasn't possible to lose. So do what you will with this information, there isn't enough people abusing it otherwise it would have been patched or disabled already. I'm sure you've noticed by now, the laser isn't exactly centered like a crosshair would be. If you're moving right, your gun sways left. And if you're moving left, your gun sways right. There's also a lot of idle sway when you're standing still because unlike aiming down sights, you can't hold your breath point firing. There isn't an easy way to counteract the sway. You just have to practice with a laser. Grind factory insane bots on high mode. Horde might lag your PC, so do it on high. And then you just point fire while moving around. You can start with two lasers, one on each side. Then when you get used to the sway, you switch to a single laser. And eventually the end goal is to be able to point fire with an IR light, no laser indicator. Don't aim for 100% consistency, sometimes targets are just too far away. And in a real world scenario, I would have been aiming down sights leaning over the pillar here. Just try to get accurate enough to point fire headshot at 15 meters and thorax at 25 meters consistently. As always, thanks for watching. Like the video if it helps, drop a comment, sub with bell, find my Twitch here. See you in a couple days.